So thanks again. My name is Cynthia Mogo, a policy and stakeholder engagement advisor at Ilri. My primary role is really to co support the coordination of the GLAD project. And I really welcome all of you to this meeting this, um, this evening or whatever time it is, wherever you are. And we really look forward to a very enjoyable engagement. As we join, I've seen some already have started. Please put in, feel free to use the chat function. Tell us who you are and where you're joining from. A few tech tips. I know you already, you know this drill by now. Um, please, if you can just add your institutional name beside your, your institutional name, beside your name so that we know where you're from, that would be great. Um, we are requesting you kindly remember to mute your mic. If you're not speaking, we will try to do that centrally as much as possible. If you're having problems uh, hearing, our, hear, hearing me or seeing our presentation, exit and restart the Zoom and then close all other programs. Like you just heard, we are recording the session. It will be made available on the ILRI YouTube channel after this. And then also, if you have any questions as we go through the presentations, feel free to raise them in the chat and start a conversation. But note, uh, maybe private chats, we will see all your private chats, so be careful. So into our objectives and agenda for today. So in today's session, we hope to do three things. With our current project phase of GLAD coming to an end, we'd like to use this um, session or this meeting to see how we are fared as a network. Primarily, we'd like to draw on the lessons we've learned on collaboration, networking, and alliance building. We'd also like to develop ideas on how to better collaborate at national and global levels. And then we will explore ways to collaborate at upcoming events, for example, the COP27 that will be in Egypt. So we want to look at how we can all work together. And to achieve these objectives, we have, we have organized the agenda into three main sessions. After I'm done with the pre preliminary introductions, Michael Victor will give us a short presentation on the evolution of GLAD, the GLAD project. Then we will be taken into a panel discussion that will be led by Peter Ballantyne from Ilri as well on alliance building that we will be seeking to answer questions on why alliance building is important, where it has worked and what lessons we can take from where from the people who will be in the panel. Mm -hmm. Lastly, we'll get into some group work and group planning to explore how we can work better, how we can to explore how we can work better mm -hmm. together. At the end of all that, Peter will lead us through a quick report back session and Michael and Shirley will wrap up, wrap, wrap things up quickly. So before we go into Michael's presentation, let's have a brief warm up exercise in the chat. I will ask you two questions and I'll give you 45 seconds to type your responses, okay? So the first question Michael has put it up, what are the biggest, uh, biggest issues facing sustainable livestock in low and middle income countries on the horizon? in your opinion, what are those issues that we should all be looking at and thinking about, even as we have this discussion? You can say zoonotic, climate change, climate change, yes. Yes, climate change. Anything else? Climate. Yes, Michael. Oh, Fiona, a different one, land tenure and security, good. Andrew Bison, climate change, yes. And political economy, yep. Environmental degradation, clash of priorities. Hmm, interesting. Anti livestock. I like that one called uh, Namukolo. Yeah, yes. How to support poor livestock keepers? Yeah, we we'll look into that. Lack of funding. Yes, lack of funding is very big. Okay, you can continue adding that. Let's go to the second question balancing the narrative. Thank you, Shirley. Um, the, the, the second question is really to get to know you beyond your names and the people you've typed in. We really want to know what role do you play in sustainable livestock advocacy? What is your role in the advocacy of sustainable livestock? Do you see yourself as an evidence provider maybe? Are you an influencer that we can tap? Or a knowledge broker maybe? Or are you an, a communication oracle? <laughs> Social media expert maybe? <laughs> Or are you an alliance or coalition builder? You're good at making partnerships work. What do you see yourself as? Providing balanced evidence. Wow, 
efficient and communicating. Coalition build, I really agree. Susan, yes, Susan is being gentle, reminding the North of the realities of the South. That's a good way of putting it. Provision of evidence, and thank you. Yes, Annabelle, thank you, the, the, um, digital media. Michael, we have a very good mix of people here. As you take it forward, let's look at this and think of how we can work with this nice team with, in the next phase of life. Thank you so much, everyone. Michael? Excellent. Uh, thanks a lot, Cynthia. Really nice to kick it off. And uh, thanks, everybody. My name's, if I don't know you already, my name is Michael Victor. I'm the head of communications and knowledge management uh, at Ilri. Uh, working alongside particularly Cynthia and with Peter too, uh, Peter Ballantyne, who I'm sure many of you know, uh, to to kind of coordinate uh, and run the, the GLAD program. Uh, so with this, I'm just going to take you through a very quick overview. I think a lot of you know about uh, GLAD, and I think a lot of you have seen, maybe seen parts of this presentation in one form or the other at a couple of other meetings, but uh, it's good. I mean, and I see a lot of people who uh, fit into where we're really trying to go with GLAD3. Uh, and a lot of GLAD3, I see coalition builders and network networkers. Uh, the real purpose of this meeting is to better find ways how we're going to build coalitions, how we're going to network and work, kind of work, a, have GLAD help people work a bit more cohesively together and see how we can support uh, actions over the course of the next three years. So it's great to see all these types of uh, ex expertise and how we can really shape uh, GLAD uh, that will be starting up very soon. Uh, so with that, I think one of the things is our starting points and people answered a lot of these issues uh, in first question, uh, you know, where are our starting points? And I think everyone brought up some of the key issues there. I think, uh, you know, we all believe that, you know, we all understand the issues with uh, livestock. We're not saying livestock is a, a solution for everything and in every context. I think one of the things that we all see is that particularly in low and middle income countries, livestock can deliver a huge range of benefits and development outcomes, whether it's better nutrition, uh, better incomes for smallholders or job opportunities, greater empowerment for women or enhanced resilience and adaptation to climate change with some co-benefits of mitigation. So we really see livestock as a multi-problem solving solution, but we also recognize some of the issues that come with it. Uh, and we've also seen that investments in sustainable livestock do not match their potential. And we see that for a number of reasons, the anti-livestock uh, groups that have been uh, emerging that we've just discussed about. Uh, and we see others really starting to kind of pressure in investors who have been traditionally uh, interested in livestock for a variety of reasons now having some questions. So, you know, the objective and focus for us in, uh, in GLAD is to really kind of grow the intellectual, financial, and policy support. It's not just about in growing the kind of investments in livestock, but really engaging in the intellectual and policy support for the sustainable livestock agenda, uh, and really start to hope to support and accelerate the uptake of the solutions as well. So it's not just the investments, but how do we kind of broker these solutions? And that's something that we'll talk about uh, uh, later on. So GLAD is, you know, I think many of you know uh, the International Livestock Research Institute, and I think GLAD and its evolution has followed where ILRI has gone as well. Uh, you know, for ILRI is a research institute for, so for much of its focus for since its creation, uh, establishment has really been focusing on generating evidence and doing evidence-based research. Uh, and GLAD started uh, in response to some of the anti-livestock discussions the lack of investment in, in uh, the livestock sector. And we've been learning as we've been going as well. So GLAD has been definitely a learning process approach. So the first phase of GLAD was really kind of testing things out, developing, kind of gathering the evidence, bringing it together, uh, developing some messages, and really then testing out how we go about engagement and how we do communications and uh, media outreach. Uh, in in phase two, we really started to then focus on communication. Since we had gathered a lot of the evidence and been able to synthesize that, that was put up onto the Why Livestock Matters website. We really started then testing the waters, and you'll see that in some 
campaigns and products being a bit more intentional uh, and a bit more kind of proactive in some of the work that we had been doing, doing a little bit more proactive media engagement, working a lot with uh, with Marchmount and Marchmount's been working a lot with the GLAD community to be a bit more proactive in how we go about media. Uh, we started working with and through ambassadors. So understanding that it's not just the message, but the messengers. Uh, and then, you know, more, again, more strategic uh, influencing and engagement at key, uh, you know, international processes. And we'll hear some of that today, whether it was about UNFFS, looking at livestock master plans, uh, bringing in the, the One Health agenda as well. Uh, and, you know, now as we move forward, with the GLAD3, where we really want to grow financial and policy support, we want to be much more strategic and focused where we can. Uh, moving from, from just you know, you know, uh, disseminating broadcasting messages and engaging in different events to really trying to broker uh, investable solutions. Uh, and we want to target uh, and engage, you know, communications and make communications much more kind of intentional and smart around the priority topics. And again, why we're here today is to really focus on building alliances. Uh, let me go through. So just really quickly, you know, what we've seen over, the, as you've seen with this kind of evolution, uh, I think we've done a really good job with kind of strategic engagement and partnerships, getting into the right kind of meetings and places. We've had a lot of great innovative uh, comms products over the last couple of years, uh, did a lot of great op-eds, getting uh, our kind of perspectives a lot more in the media. Uh, and we've been working with a lot more people. We feel, you know, we've been working with a lot more kind of networks and alliances and, and ambassadors over the last couple of years, but we still need to do better on that. Uh, and a lot of new narratives have kind of emerged and kind of seen as a priority. Uh, gender mainstreaming, we've really tried to work on. Uh, and then kind of not just working at the global level, but really taking it down and working people like with people like Jackson, uh, Ben in, uh, Tan, uh, in Uganda, and Amos in Uganda, uh, in Tanzania, about the livestock master plans, working with caught up as well. So really trying to to not just work at the global level, but at the national level. Uh, and so we really want to build upon that for phase two. Again, in terms of what we're here for today, uh, I think we've really started to build networking, particularly as Cynthia's come on board to really work with a range of stakeholders now. And you can see these are just some examples of where we've kind of worked together with different groups. Uh, we've worked with, you know, the GLAD-D group, with Venture 37 on uh, a webinar series. We worked with quite a few different groups on, uh, eat la uh, you know, Eat Lancet Advocacy, the International Year of Rangelands and Pasture Lands, a lot of work, uh, informal markets and food security. So again, the list is there. I'm not going to read it all out, but we've had a lot of interactions and in trying to work with a lot of different groups. And again, I think some of the lessons for us is that uh, D groups, again, isn't a network in itself, but it's a place that's appreciated as a, a space to share information uh, and get updated. We haven't had so much discussion uh, on the D group, so maybe that's something that can emerge as well. But again, it seems to be a space at least where people can share information. I think we've had success when we focused on issues or big processes. So joining in and trying to support the, the great work that was done by uh, everybody at the International, for the International Year of Rangelands and Pasturelands, uh, and then really trying to be a bit more intentional about how we uh, kind of worked or engaged in the UNFFS space, both at the national level and at the global level. Uh, you know, and sometimes we find, you know, getting that common interest to engage in wider coalitions and build campaigns together, it is difficult, you know, trying to get everyone on board, trying to get different messages, but that's what we really want to try to, we, we haven't had so much success and we want to learn a bit more how we can do that. And I think that's part of the, the meetings today. Uh, so just really quickly, I'm looking at time. Uh, so the future of GLAD3, I just wanna quickly go through what we're, how we're gonna be working in GLAD3. Uh, so our initial value proposition is really to use evidence, targeted communication, brokerage, and influencing these kind of pillars that we work through uh, to demonstrate how 
how you know how sustainable and inclusive livestock systems can meet development needs of the of you know low and middle income countries without compromising their future. So we really again want to focus on uh, the diversity of livestock systems, and we want to do that uh, through you know making sure that you know we're emphasizing the sustainable and kind of multi problem solving nature of of livestock. Uh, GLAD, again, does this through a variety of mechanisms. We really want to amplify and elevate evidence uh, to go in beyond the livestock sector. So not just focusing on livestock sector opportunities, but where can we go in the nutrition space or in the food system space or in the climate space or other areas where livestock is a solution. Uh, we want to work uh, with multiple partners beyond research. Uh, we want to foster, again, kind of even starting with here, this community of livestock champions. And uh, we really want to make sure that we're being a bit more strategic and impactful and not just working on everything, which has been, you can easily get kind of involved in so many different uh, processes or events. Uh, so, so what we've been going through and what we've seen, and it's evolved naturally, is kind of like three major priority issues that we really want to focus on. Uh, and that is, you know, livestock derived foods and safe and nutrition healthy diets. So the whole nutrition uh, and diets area and space, climate change and adaptation uh, and resilience, again, with the co-benefits of mitigation, but really focus on climate change and adaptation because that's the big issue in low and middle income countries. Uh, and I think that, again, came up in the what everyone saw as the issues and then rangelands land restoration, biodiversity, and what Fiona had mentioned is the, the whole land uh, issues that are coming up and kind of affect pasture lands and range lands particularly. And we address these through these kind of four approaches that we work through. Uh, so our intervention approaches, again, at the heart of GLAD is about evidence-based advocacy. So it's really still about gathering the evidence. It's about communicating the messages. And really now we're in phase three, moving away from just kind of bringing together a coalition and providing those messages, but really trying to find ways to broker interactions uh, amongst livestock champions and investors uh, so they can actually uh, move together. And then we want to be able to you know, build coalitions and alliances for targeted engagement uh, and uh, influencing in different processes. So those are our four inter intervention approaches with the the kind of key areas that we work on uh and what we see is like we'll be working on those at different levels of intensities so for instance we have our fourth area that i didn't mention which is kind of nuancing the whole discussion around sustainable livestock so how do we do that at the global level to show the diversity of livestock uh systems that it's you know what are those livestock systems whether it's milk meat eggs uh, and and that it's not just one big thing, but it's it's showing the nuance of that. So looking at different areas, like so, for instance, in the nutrition space, uh, we feel that there's a lot of evidence already, uh, but you know we still need to do communication. We feel there's a lot more opportunities and prioritization around the brokerage area, and then focusing on influencing a bit. If you look at climate change and adaptation, we've discussed with partners and others. There still needs to be evidence generation, but we really want to focus our efforts around, you know, communicating this whole issue of climate change and adaptation and, you know, seeing livestock as a solution rather than as a problem uh, in the climate space, and then working on brokerage and influencing uh, to a lesser extent. And then in land and biodiversity, again, the focus is much more on gathering the evidence uh, and then doing communication and then a little less on brokerage and influencing. So again, each of these areas will have like a, a theory of change in a sense or an impact pathway and, and kind of focus on different areas and different intensities. Uh, for alliance building, and one of the things that would be good to get feedback and start to learn from everybody today on is what are some of the principles that we need to think about when we're on alliance building? So, you know, focus, what we've seen is focusing on issues, topics, and processes that people are already working on so we can contact, con, con, so we can uh, collectively work on these important spaces. So rather than trying to work on something new, really see where other, you know, where our uh, network, where our partners really see the, the priorities. We really want to add value. We want to see, you know, we want to see GLAD as a space that adds value. We're not going to try to do new activities, but really kind of 
complement what's happening. You know, we want to work with champions and people who want to be here. So it's great to see 30 people here who really want to work together. Uh, and then again, let's try to see how we can co-design and uh, activities uh, and make sure that everyone is getting out of the interaction, what they need to get out of it and can move forward when we're working on kind of collaborative activities. Uh, so with that, I think, and again, just summing it up, we wanted to, you know, GLAD3 will re really be about moving to a more targeted approach uh, in a couple of different areas, uh, moving from a lack of investment in a sense to matchmaking and working with champions uh, around solutions. And then again, strengthening our alliances with like-minded partners and organizations. Uh, so with that, I hope that kind of summarizes it for you and we'll continue to talk about that. If there are questions, we can answer those in the chat as well, because I think we're going to want to move on to the uh, to the the panel discussion. So thank you very much. Peter, do you want to move over or do you want to take it over now? Yeah, thank you, Michael. Thank you, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to see, see so many people here this afternoon. Good. So uh, Michael, given us the big picture, um, one of the things he emphasized really was that we were talking very much about um, um, how do we work together more effectively? How can we be being better with this alliance building to support advocacy, to promote more and better investment in sustainable livestock in food system? So what we're going to do now, I'm going to just, just start with a few thoughts, and then we're going to have a conversation with a few colleagues here with, uh, around some of their experiences and some of their thoughts and ideas about working together. And I wanted to really to start it off by looking back at most of us, uh, if we can remember a year ago, you know, we were deep in this food system summit process and you will probably recall or have heard about or perhaps engaged in summits and pre-summits and dialogues and action tracks, coalitions, uh, science days, country pathways, solutions clusters. You remember there was a whole kind of panoply of, of discussions and interactions and engagements I think many of us were engaged to, to, to some to kind of much more deeply and specific things, or perhaps we're trying to work across. And within the, the GLAD project in the last couple of months, we've been talking to a few colleagues from within the, the network, but also around, to try and reflect a little bit on how well we did we do, what lessons did we learn, and you know, in terms of trying to engage with this quite a messy, uh, quite a difficult to, to, to kind of follow process. And, um, and I'm not going to summarize all the main points now, but before we lead off, I want a couple of things that kind of came to mind was we were trying to see, well, how did we do with livestock? How did livestock um, kind of not perform, but did we lose or win? It's a rather simplistic. We don't want to see it like that. But the sense in a sense is that livestock, the sustainable livestock, our agenda, we didn't lose ground. I mean, at the very beginning, people felt that like this could be a mechanism by which livestock was kind of... Um, had the point, finger pointed, you know, we don't, livestock are not a solution for our, for our planet. But in fact, we, we have a sense we didn't lose ground, but perhaps we didn't also gain much ground, although there are pockets of, um, of, of real progress. I mean, I heard around food safety, for example, where this really got recognized as an important issue, and I think around rangelands too. But in other areas, the things are still up in the air, and the message from the colleagues very much as well, that was one process, one interaction, but we didn't lose ground, we perhaps didn't make ground, but there's many more uh, of such processes going on. There's other events coming up. There's still a very active anti-livestock uh, lobby globally. So, and, and, and we were trying to see what else can be learned from that. And one of the lessons in a sense was that many of us, many different actors, if you look at the global agenda for sustainable livestock, any of our individual organizations, our networks, lots and lots of people engaged. And one person said to me, um, we did a lot of engagement, we did a lot, and we're involved in a lot of follow-up, but we're not really together enough. So that's kind of this working together is a little bit the, the focus then for this conversation we're gonna have right now. So, and you know, and we all, we all I think in, in the areas we're working, we often think working together, collaboration, uh, partnering, alliance building, that you know, helps us to, to reach better, to get impact. This is all kind of rather, People, often, it's very obvious. We all do it. We kind of we're all natural collaborators and sharers. But in reality, when you get down to it, it tends not to be business as usual. So today, what we're going to do, we're going to have a conversation among four colleagues here to really see what really motivates working together and collaboration. Why do we really need to do this? And actually, how can we make it happen better? 
So I'd like to invite Michael or whoever, I'm not quite sure somebody is spotlighting me, but I hope somebody can also spotlight Namuko Lukovic, who's going to be joining us uh, as well, together with Isabel Boltenbeck, uh, Eli Paravani, and Jackson Mahengi. Nice to see you, Namukolo. Happy that you could squeeze us in for your lunch break in Dakar. <laughs> Isabel, great to see you guys. I can see, I think we're missing Jackson still on my screen at least. Does he, can he be, oh, I can see him on the top screen. So welcome everybody. So what we're gonna do is just have a very informal conversation. Um, what I'm gonna do is ask each of the people to, inter to introduce themselves very briefly. You would have seen already in the chat, they all said something. We're gonna talk a little bit about this motivations business, why is it so important that we work together beyond the kind of the, the kind of the very generic, oh, we need to, and we, we like it, but why, what's the real business propositions in a sense, and what are some of the tips? So Michael, if you could, I don't know who, if you can keep, help me with the keep timekeeping. I'd like to start, Nemokolo, tell us a little bit, can you introduce yourself? Um, I saw on the chat that you said you're an influencer and integrator. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit, what, do you, what role do you play in the sustainable livestock space? Well, in the sustainable livestock space, I think I am new in terms of those particular terms. But as a, as a nutritionist advocate, livestock has been part of the, the food basket that I have been advocating for years um, because of the, the, the high density of nutrients in livestock products that allows to be able to improve nutrient intake with small quantities of livestock. And then the other thing is just looking at other roles that livestock plays um, in low middle income settings, in rural settings where the diverse food basket that we are looking for to address nutrition better cannot, is not possible without livestock providing all sorts of roles. One is in the actual production itself, the role that livestock plays in, in, in traction um, and, and farm power. And, and then the other thing is the role that livestock will play almost as an investment for poor communities, where it is actually a bank account upon which uh, food security depends. When the times are hard, it's livestock that comes in the place to save the day. Uh, people sell livestock to buy these other foods because those other foods are not available there or they don't grow there. So if you get rid of livestock as a nutritionist, I don't see how I can um, adequately reach good nutrition outcomes in a lot of these uh, low and middle income countries, especially in pastoralist settings. So that's where my advocacy for livestock comes from. Thank you. Thank you. And also for reminding us of those different functions that the that livestock provide. Um, and you also work for the International Livestock Research Institute. Um, and let me move on to your colleague, Isabel. Isabel, same question. Tell us who you are. What, where do you fit in this livestock space? I think you said on your chat that you are an, a provider of balanced evidence. Trying to at least. <laughs> yes, I'm Isabel. I'm an economist. I am at artillery uh, as well with Namukolo. She's in Addis, I'm in Nairobi, uh, called Nairobi those, those days. Um, yeah, where I fit, it's really about um, looking at, at the evidence for livestock for livelihoods. I just, in English, I like this word livestock because it, it starts with lives. And uh, uh, really, uh, I don't like very much the English language, but in that particular case, <laughs> it's a very great word, livestock for lives. So um, so it's really about the different functions of uh, of, of livestock. And Amukola already mentioned that um, very much. And she um, focusing on on the livestock keepers, which are really, really key. Of, of obviously, they are the one um, um, producing the milk, the eggs, and and the meat. Uh, in terms of in terms of income, in terms of food, in terms of employment as well, people need to have jobs, need to have be able to derive an income from their activities, and livestock do provide all all of that. But even beyond beyond the 
the life, the producer nodes of the, of the value chains, really other, other people depend as well on livestock. And, and where I fit in is, is the evidence about the different functions of livestock. How do we get trade-offs in terms of uh, adaptation, but as well in terms of how do, what, what, what does it mean in terms of um, the change uh, in, of climate, the change in market demand, what inter, inter, inter interventions are being promoted are needed to increase uh, people's, to improve people's livelihoods through livestock for the livestock keepers and all the value chain actors. So for example, an interventions at value chains in terms of um, being a bit stricter in terms of sales of raw milk, what does it mean? It may mean, okay, on one side, better hygiene, better food safety, but then higher price possibly, who will bear the cost of that? Will actually then the mother have to reduce consumption, um, the, the, the purchase of milk for the for their kids? So it's a very complex system. And this is why I think we need uh, scientists, we need researchers, economists like me, but working with different types of, uh, of other scientists to get this balance evidence. And um, that's what I'm trying to do um, the best I can to provide that clear and balanced evidence. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to Ellie. Same story, Ellie, in terms of who you are and where you fit in this space. Did sure, great. Thank you, and thanks for having me. So yeah, my name's Ellie, and I fit into this space because I um, coordinate a coalition called the Action for Animal Health Coalition, which was set up by Brooke. Um, we launched about a year ago. But the idea behind this coalition, it's uh, more about strengthening the animal health system. So we recognized that there was lots of organizations working on specific types of animal or specific diseases, but no organizations working on the system itself. So we brought together um, 12 different organizations working in different areas to take that more system style um, approach. And for me, my background is really um, campaigning, advocacy and campaigning. I'm not a technical, technical expert by any means. Um, so I've campaigned previously around um, animal welfare and human rights, and I try to bring that kind of campaigning mindset um, into this sector. So that's that's how I fit into this. Thanks very much. And it's nice we have the nutritionist, the scientist, the campaigner. Jackson, <laughs> tell us, Jackson, I believe you're from the private sector, which is super. Same story, tell us who you are, where you fit in all of this. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Peter. I, I hope I'm clear, you can hear me well. Um, very good. Great, so thank you so much. I'm Jackson Mahenge, I work for Dalberg. Um, and uh, I think in this space, I fit as investment promoter um, because I've been working uh, in promoting investments, especially the private sector investments uh, in the livestock sector, uh, in the other sectors as well, but mostly in the, um, the, the livestock sector. And uh, I think um, this, is, this is a great space, I would say, and uh, creating coalition in uh, in the livestock sector is really, really important. And for us who are actually networking with the private sector, it makes a lot of sense because um, for the private sector actors to invest in the sector actually needs a lot of efforts from even other um, other, other actors in the, in the space. Um, we have learned quite uh, a lot in the investment promotion in Tanzania that most of the private sector investors who are actually investing in the livestock sector uh, actually depends on um, a lot from the public investments that are made in the sector that actually creates the environment for private sector to invest. Um, for the time that I've been working with the uh, private sector in Tanzania, I, I've actually realized that most of the investments that are actually made in the in the sector uh, is, as a result of the uh, public investments that have been made in terms of the policies in terms of the taxes uh, the reforms that are made the business environment that are actually made uh, by the public sector so um definitely i would say the coalition is really uh, an important thing an important tool to drive the sector and make the transformation because Every actor in the sector is actually a key, and every actor depends on the other. And for us, we're actually uh, promoting the private sector investments. We'll say uh, the coalition will be a key tool in terms of bringing in the private sector investors, and that will be the way to transform the sector. Over to you, Peter. Great. Thank you very much, Jackson. So, um, 
investment promoted, but you talked a lot about the, the public as much as the private sector. So I think we have a really interesting mix here, which is super. So that was really just a quick um, reintroduction round. So we kind of get, a, get our heads a bit into the colleagues on the panel. So I'd like to start, let's go back into the, let's get into the meat of it now, and then we'll it. So this Food Systems Summit um, has created really, I mean, it's really created almost a new terminology, a, a new language, a new framing, a new concept. This, we have the food systems in a sense that we can all gather around. And now we have these coalitions and these, especially these food systems, these kind of country pathways. So what, is the, what do you think are the critical one or two, just briefly, critical challenges or opportunities you see for, let's say, the sustainable livestock community, if, if, that, if that's us? What, 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 what do these country pathways mean for us? How important are they? Should we be, should we be in them, out of them? Uh, where, where do you see this? Uh, and and the, the sense of working together in a life building. Do we need to do more of that differently? Yeah, so I think maybe <clears throat> quickly that just to say I was on the leadership teams of two of the action tracks and I am a founding member of uh, one of the coalitions, the Healthy Diets Coalitions. And then in the country level, I was also quite engaged at working on country food systems transformation pathways. On your question, should we be in it? Absolutely. I think if we are not part and integral parts of what's going on with the national food systems transformation pathways, we essentially shouldn't exist, is what I would say. Why? Um, because the country pathways are linking to national agricultural development programs, and they want to um, transform food systems in such a way that the agricultural development that we bring forth takes a broader food systems uh, perspective so that we can create these linkages that are needed for a holistic and better functioning food system. Livestock should be an integral part of that. Whether we're talking about climate mitigation, we need to figure out what is the role there of livestock? How do we sustain livestock? What are the, the sustainable livestock solutions? Um, if we are talking about better diets, what role can livestock play and how do we bring the sustainability component to those diets? through the type of production practices then, that we actually engage in. If we're thinking breeding uh, of livestock, we need to think of those breeds of livestock, where do they fit in in the broader climate mitigation space? How do they contribute to diets? How do they contribute to health? And then there's all the whole issue of pandemics and what if you livestock are right in there. So in my view, Short answer to your question, it is critical that we are integrated within what's going on with the light, with the food systems transformation pathway. We have a, an important role to play if livestock is to do the role it should be doing without getting into the troubles of land degradation and greenhouse gas emissions and what have you. All of those are challenges, but if we are not there, then who's gonna address the issues? And, and I think we are better positioned to do it than somebody else who's going to say, get rid of the livestock. Thank you. Okay. So it's kind of, oh, it sounds like an almost like, it is the word existent. It's, it's, it's like almost existential. We have to be there. This is the place where all the agendas come together at the country yes. level. And if we're not there, we're gonna just miss out and other people will miss out. Okay, let me move on. Thanks, Namakota. Isabel. Um, you're the scientist, you're leading a global, a global CGIR initiative around livestock productivity and more. Um, country work is presumably, you know, the work on the ground in the countries is pretty critical. So what do you see, where, where does, what, what does collaboration fit in this? I mean, we all say, yeah, yeah, let's collaborate. But what kind of outcomes and impacts would you really want to see happening in terms of working together, collaborating for your research agenda, your science agenda? 
Yeah, thanks, Peter. Uh, I think, and going back to what Mamukolo was saying about, you know, really focusing on building on, on what the country needs with their, their food system transformation pathway that they have identified. So the work at country level from, from the, the initiative that you mentioned, which is called Sapling for sustainable animal productivity for livelihoods, gender, nutrition and gender equality. It, it's really about ensuring that the research we do um, meet the demand from the country's stakeholders and actors. It's really about anchoring our work into what is required, not, okay, us scientists, we like sometimes working on our own topics and deviating from possibly most urgent uh, questions. So the fact that uh, we have, we've been embedded our work in seven countries, working, not just working with, but really being embedded in, in country in country work for, for me has been, has been very important. And just just to be able to do that, what we said to do is even when before we finished the, the proposal was to engage the stakeholders and the actors from different, you know, from, from, from researchers, of course, we, we like working with our friends, researchers, but as well, you know, the private sector, the NGOs, the government, of course. And, and then and then as we started the proposal, the, the project itself uh, in, in from January, you know, co-creating that that program through a theory of change approach. So a very strong actor-led, um, you know, uh, country-led uh, research and, and I think it's only by addressing uh, you know what people need and matching with our our research expertise and, and intel that I think we're gonna really move the sector forward uh, really this collaboration is, is really key addressing the right challenges yeah I really did that first of time thank you so it sounds like the more people in the room the better it is for scientists yeah and they go, well, I kind of come back to you on that when you think about it. Ellie, tell the same story. Well, tell us a little bit. You mentioned already about the Animal Health Alliance. So you, so what is it going, why do we need a, a new alliance? What is it that we need to have? Why, why are we having an alliance? Why do we need to work together? Tell us a little bit. Can you give the value proposition in a couple of minutes? Yeah, absolutely. I think quite similar to what I was saying before, I think what we're really trying to do slightly differently from other, and I would call ourselves a coalition rather than um, an alliance, mm -hmm. uh, is that we're really trying to look at that systems level, you know, because like people have talked about before, there are so many issues at the moment where animal health is part of the solution. So AMR, rising zoonotic diseases, climate change, food security, so many things. And if we can focus at the systems level rather than on something, you know, like a specific disease, then maybe we can have a more kind of cascading impact across all of those issues. So really that kind of domino effect um, type theory of change. So, you know, all of our members have different strengths. And I think that's where our strength as a coalition is. We're all working on separate um, issues. And this coalition is really trying to bring all of those together as a whole, because I think one of the most important reasons to set up a, a coalition is when you're trying to solve a problem that's much bigger than you are, you know, where you need multiple organisations to come together um, to solve it. So I know we haven't got much time, so I'll keep my answer brief. Okay, so it sounds a little bit similar than I get to what is it? I mean, you need to bring the right people together, and I guess it's the sum of the strengths is... is is what we're looking for at the system level. Let me go to Jackson, completely different story, Jackson. You've been involved with this lifestyle master plan process in Tanzania, um, which is intended to kind of guide investment at a kind of almost a very high level for the whole country, a lot of sector investments, but also brings people together. What's been the added value of the collaboration piece of this? I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I kind of have, my, I have in my mind a bunch of modelers sitting in a room doing things with computers. But was there actual <laughs> real collaboration going on as well? Working together, stakeholder engagement and all those good things? Thanks, thanks Peter. And uh, yeah, uh, very, very good question. Uh, so I would say yes, uh, through the master plan uh, implementation, we have actually learned quite significantly and especially people coming together bringing together the, uh, uh, the, the agenda, uh, working on the focused agenda. Uh, that has been quite very significant in transforming the sector. Uh, giving an example, taking an example of the Tanzania Livestock Master Plan. Uh, so the country set an agenda um, and actually defined a long-term framework through the master plan. 
and uh, most all the key stakeholders in the livestock sector actually were able to define where they fit in and how do, uh, are they able to contribute to uh, transforming the sector through the broader framework of the master plan. And what we have learned over time, uh, all stakeholders coming together to define the agenda together has been quite very helpful because all ev everyone coming in with the strength, um, they have different strength that they are putting in together. So uh, having all of them together, we are able to transform the sector. I can give a very specific example. Recently, we actually worked with the uh, dairy uh, sector stakeholders. And what we were trying to do was to, we had an agenda to transform the dairy sector. So we developed, we actually came up with the priorities from the master plan and agreed on which are the important priorities that we should focus on. And every stakeholder agreed that these are the, are the, are the uh, priorities that we need to focus. And everyone actually uh, co committed that I will contribute this um, initiative, I'll commit this uh, in terms of financial, in terms of the uh, policies. So there were a lot of commitments that actually were put together and that helped to transform the sector. So we have quite a very good plan uh, with, of transformation in the daily sector because every stakeholder came in and contributed significantly to uh, the journey of transformation. Okay, thanks. We're running short of time, so I go to Joe. I'll stay with you, Jackson. Let me, you just described the very nicely the process by which all these people came together. Secret of success for working together. Can you give me just in a half a minute, what's a big a tip you want to share with us? Secret of success, working together to transform the dairy sector in Tanzania. What's the secret of success? Uh, great. Uh, so I, I think there are a few uh, factors that I, would say, that I would say one. that just one, I think yeah. um, aligning to the common agenda is a great. Aligning to the common agenda. Okay. I think we've lost Jackson actually. Success factor for uh, all stakeholders to come together. Okay, so aligning to the common agenda, that's what I heard, yes? Yes, aligning um, to the common agenda. Assuming that the common agenda rec is somehow recognized, uh, yeah, everybody buys into that, I guess, right, in the beginning. Okay, Ellie, same thing. Secrets of success for good building a great coalition, not an alliance? Yep, I would say make sure that your structure is very nimble, very quick. You can make decisions very quickly, have a clear set of key messages that everyone agrees on so you can just go ahead without wasting too much time. That's my... Key recommendation. Okay, that one point had about four hidden into it. Yes, okay. Let's go to Isabel then. One one secret of success, working together. Be honest. Honesty and but build trust. Yeah, be honest. When you don't know, you don't know, and you just say it. And if, yeah. Okay, honesty, building trust. Yes, okay. Namakola, last word for yourself. Secrets of success in integrating, influencing, working together. Commuted. I think rather than having a common agenda, I would say a common vision. And then the different stakeholders will have their own agendas, but those agendas would then align towards contributing towards that common vision because the entry points for different stakeholders will be different. So a common vision that would align everybody's efforts to me would be the secret. Okay, so the, we need the vision, we need the alignment to the vision. Uh, Isabel, we're talking about the trust and and, uh, and the honesty, and then we talked about the kind of the clarity of decision making and really clarity of messaging and all those things. Good. Uh, we've run out of a bit of time. Um, if anybody else would like, if you want to add anything, that, if you wanted to say something more, panelists, please put it in the chat for us. We're going to have to move on. I'm, I'm having chased by Michael with the time, uh, the time here. So thank you so much for sharing your insights and lessons. I think every one of these these stories we actually began to hear about would be a really great little mini workshop on its own, actually, because each one of them was 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 worth digging deeper into. So we're going to move on to our next um, part of the agenda, and I think I'm still talking for this. Is that right, Michael? I think we're going to do a, a quick exercise. What we wanted to do was we've we've been um, we've been hearing from our panelists, and we wanted to send you all to an idea board to do a very short plenary exercise so you should see in the chat 
a link to an idea board. An idea board is a really simple thing where you can go there and you can post um, and you can post your ideas and suggestions and comments. Um, but what you should do, you should be able to click on the link, go to the board, and thank you very much, Michael, for sharing it. So what we would like you to do is only in five minutes, if you could just take on the left hand side, if in terms of working together to build alliances or coalitions or to advocate what what's worked and you should be able just to click if you just click on that green plus sign it will just open up for you and you can just um you can just type in your text yeah um so we'd like to know if there's something that really worked for you if you want to put here honesty or or a vision tell us what works in the middle it's hat if you look back and around us have you seen or did you think there was a missed opportunity in terms of working together that we came across where we say, huh, that's something we missed. But why did we miss that? Was the food system summit, we all ran ahead, but did we miss an opportunity there? And on the right hand side, um, I can see somebody already putting something in super exactly the same, right? On the right hand side, looking forward, looking to the next 18 months or 12 months or six months, was there an opportunity for us to work together? to really, um, what, what do you see as a big opportunity coming up? Do we think the COP27 is gonna be a big opportunity? What do you think? If you can just take two minutes and um, add a few um, add a few sheets, um, cards onto the screen, and then we have a quick look at them to see what we get. I'm already seeing, for example, what works well, uh, starting with a vision and not forcing full alignment, yeah? And then we're also seeing a quick reference cheat sheet, like a set of key messages and assets. So basically everybody who's here, Everybody should just click on the link and you should have access to the button to the tool and you can just type things in. If you want to, if you want, if you're, depends what shape your brain is, you may want to start on the left and move to the right or move to the, from the right to the left or just choose one, just be a middle column person, anything you like. So let's take a minute. I'm going to stop talking for two minutes so we can just type in things and see what we get. link in the chat yep i can do that then and about yep this it is right there now you should have a chat link in the chat so we're about uh we're about 30 people so i would assume everybody has one maybe it's something that works well or something that we mustn't miss and you can use this opportunity to push your agenda even if you don't yet have a vision. So we can see what Michael is adding. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> We can see Michael's agenda. So think about this again. This is working together, this coalition thing, this um, alliance thing, whatever the verb is. What works well. And in, in, in a sense, as Michael was saying at the beginning, in this lab project, we, got, we, we really want to try and move forward in a more collaborative way. Ah, so my, Andrew, if you don't have, you can't type. Okay, so not an upcoming opportunity. Okay, methane reduction. Yeah. If you want to, yes, if you don't, if you are unable to type onto the board, type in the chat in the same way. You'll have to find, Peter, where uh, Ideas Board was created. Maybe the US government isn't so. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think we're, um, Michael, I think we're running we quite, quite behind the, time, right? Okay, so do we want to have a look? Um, I want to like, uh, what works well, I'm going to see, I mean, I can see Namakolo studying the board. And Namakolo, if you look at something on the what works well, Namakolo, are you, are you struck by anything where you say that's something I hadn't thought of, or that's something, yes, I've definitely encountered. If you look at the left-hand side, what works well? Um... I think that the idea of not seeking consensus um, is is one that I think can slow us down. I'm not sure if I am muted. Uh huh. No, we're um, hearing you. Because what I what I find is because stakeholders have got different entry points in the food system, it's really difficult to say 
agree on what you should be doing because people will focus according to whatever their institutional agenda is. And what is important is to actually take the big picture of saying, can that contribute to this bigger vision that we have got? And if it contributes, then what happens is you're building momentum from the various uh, stakeholder efforts. So I think the one about uh, don't always try to seek consensus is something that slows us down. Rather, let's look at what are you contributing to that vision and can you help build that momentum? Okay, thank you very much. That's really, really good. Just a nice big picture piece there. Try not, yeah, because people do spend time trying to get everything perfect and full agreement. And maybe it's better to, yeah, to, to, to agree with where you want to go and, and mobilize the different expertise. Michael, do you want to talk some, do you want to say something, Michael, yourself about the right hand side of the screen in terms of outstanding upcoming opportunities? Are you seeing some consensus emerging there on the right hand side, Michael? Peter, can you move to someone else? I kind of move the, uh, I have to move the uh, people in again. The rooms got messed up. Okay, so yeah, okay. So I will ask maybe Cynthia. Cynthia, can you look in the right-hand side? I hope you're here, Cynthia, still. On the right-hand side, Cynthia, the screen, are we seeing uh, any, any, any consensus? I can see the COP coming up. Uh, COP, COP seems to me a consensus and also my uh, Peter um, country level food system. Something at okay. country level needs to happen yeah we so we need okay, to that's good yeah. okay that then um I, I, I don't want to spend too much time but is there anybody in the room who would like to just put their hand up and say i've seen something on the screen that i completely love or i completely hate or i disagree with anybody want to just stick your hand up and you have your moment of glory on the screen <laughs> no um, i'm not seeing any hands up anybody anything striking Otherwise, we're going to I was, move on to the I was next part. I was trying yes. to find my hand, so I don't know. Ah, there you are, Namagono, yes. I think it's need to find ways of talking beyond our livestock bubble is important. Uh, because the livestock people are the converted. Uh, we need to talk to other people and show them what we are seeing that they might be missing, especially on the sustainability side. Okay, thanks very much. I see Caroline has got a hand up. Caroline? Yes, thank you very much. Um, I see on the right hand side, there's a, a comment on, can we start a country network of livestock champions? Uh, I just wanna mention that we already have two um, or three from we can build on. The first one is Gazel, when we do have country that are involved. The second one is the FAO Subcommittee on Livestock uh, that actually uh, group all countries interested in livestock. So this is also a very good forum for us. Uh, and the third one, you will recall that during the UN Food System, uh, we also created a Sustainable Livestock Coalition to which Hillary is a, is a funding member. Um, so we're still working to get the coalition out of the, of the ground but it is also a platform that we have that already exists that can be used. Thank you. That's correct. So I'm, I'm hearing, I think, behind what you're saying is we don't want too many more networks, right? Okay. Um, I saw an interesting question from David in the chat, but I'm going to hope that Andrew will reply to David. Uh, and, see how that goes. And, I, and I see Andrew's also giving us into more some other comments. I think we're going to have to move on to the next phase of the conversation. I know Michael's been creating the groups. Michael, are you ready to stop sharing this screen and maybe we can go to the exercise because we can pick up exactly on some of the things that are here on the screen. Okay, great. Uh, let me stop sharing. Do you want me to go back to the presentation? I think we need the slide again. We need the exercise slide just to say we're going to, we're going to break everybody up now into four groups and we want to just very quickly introduce that exercise. Okay, let me just, sorry about this. No problem, you're multitasking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ah, here we go. I think this is it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is it's an earlier slide we did. No. Up, 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 up. Yeah, one more. Yeah, yeah here. wonderful, wonderful. This even here we go. Right. So, guys, we're going to break up. We're going to break everybody up into four groups. 
I think Michael has assigned people based on their interest. So what we want to do basically is follow the conversation we've just had. We have four groups and we're going to spend about probably 20 minutes rather than 25. It's going to be a, probably a little bit shorter, maybe 25. What we're going to do is we're going to break down together into four topics. And maybe you can show the next screen, Michael. Um, one, the next slide. So one of, one of it is around this country networking business, this country engagement. Also, the Namukola talked a little bit about the country focus. And so basically, we got a small, we wanted people talking there. And what we're looking for is, a, is if we were to work together at this level, what might some of the outcomes be that we would want to try to achieve? And how would we get there? Same questions for the second group, which is looking at kind of the global regional focus. What are the big events? What are the big processes? What's coming up? The COP, the AGRF, or other things, other big things on our agenda where we want to really work together and, and, and make a difference. So how could we do that? Again, outcomes, again, actions. Third group, looking at digital assets, online communication, the websites, um, what information do we need to be communicating? How best do we do that together? And the last one is around the notion of influencers. Michael had talked earlier about champions, and we hear often about champions and ambassadors and influencers. Where do they fit in all of this? How do we, how do we, what kind of what could we what kind of outcomes could we expect by working with these types of people? And how do we make it happen? So that's the exercise. We've also created a um, a, a Google slide where we're going to be capturing uh, all the, 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 the quick notes. Um, each of the groups has two people to support facilitation and, and documenting. I just put the notes in the chat, Michael. We're good. So we're gonna, I think you're going to send us away and we want to yep. capture a few things and then we'll come back and do a quick um, plenary recap, right? Great. So with the people who didn't sign up on the Google Doc, uh, I've just placed them in a, a couple of different rooms. If you do have a, if you wanted to move to another room, just let me know and I'll try to get to you. But uh, uh, I think we've gotten everybody. So I'll open up the rooms and happy discussions. Can you share what's one collaboration I, lesson or idea that you've picked up from today or you brought with you that would help us to enhance investment in sustainable livestock? It could be around the country work or the regional work or the comms work, or the, the other pieces we've been working on, or you say, well, I've got something completely different. If you want to drop an idea in, and these are the types of things I'm, I think that we would then want to pick up and run with as the, as the next phase of the project starts. So if you have an idea and you say, I'd like to do X in a collaborative way, maybe that would be a good opportunity to just drop it into the chat right now. Um, are there anybody dropping anything into the chat? I'm not seeing anything coming in. I'll give you another half a minute. Um, in the chat, it should be, does anybody have an idea? You must have had ideas in the groups you just had. Thank you, Cynthia. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's good. Visions business. Um, okay, I can see clear messages and narratives and beating some drums together. It's always nice to be, to play drums together, right? One simple, clear message at anyone. Yeah, okay, good. Thank you lobbying specific audiences. Amos, can you tell us which specific audiences? Yeah, Amos that was podcast. a question in our group that, uh, you know, the advocacy generally, you know, has, has been happening, is great. But um, uh, a point was raised actually by a couple of people in our group that it would also be nice to identify specific groups, uh, specific decision makers in individual countries who we think can be a leverage towards uh, achieving the objectives of sustainable livestock um, campaign. So, so Amos, would you be saying a category of person or an individual, a named person, would you be talking, I mean, what, what level of detail would, we, would you want, we need to go to? Yeah, I think you would perhaps then um, identify a specific uh, decision maker, yes, within, uh, say, the Ministry uh, of Finance or the Ministry of um, uh, livestock, uh, who you think can, you know, assist in that direction. Okay. Are there any more points? Other people, thanks very much, Amos. Other folks dropping ideas into the chat, learning from others, yep. Um, okay, we're going to, in the interest of time, if you want to keep on chatting, any other collaborative ideas, synthesis document, that's interesting. These will be the types of things that we could do together and promote together, right? Translating science for the public, and compelling spokespeople. Hmm. Who are we going to compel? Are we, who, is, who, who typed that? Is that, I don't see who typed that. Are we going to compel, oh, that's David. Are we going to compel people to be spokespersons? Yeah, have compelling spokespersons. 
Okay, guys, let's move on. If you have another thought, second point in the chat um, is for a second one is, is there an, and Dr. Dropping it in now, is there an action you want to see the project take forward in its next phase? Michael, I've, I've introduced the next phase. Um, uh, is there a specific action that you would like to see the project that's important for you that you say, yes, uh, we need to compel scientists to become spokespeople? Um, for example, what do we think? Is there a specific action you want to see? Um, do we need a media campaign? Do we need a, uh, do we need a, I don't know, a, a huge stand at, okay, and to the COP meetings, amplify the voices of the farmers. Okay, Ellie, that's an interesting one, yes. The livestock, in this case, I guess it's livestock owning farmers or something like that, yeah. Amplify voices. Any other thoughts? Frederick's agreeing with Ellie, yeah. Clear, succinct, okay. Authentic, uh-huh. Thank you, Shirley, more non-livestock spokespersons. So these are all suggestions here. And we're going to engage with the emission from an LIC. Yes, okay, yep, infusing nuances. I think I'm like is very strong about this that we have to talk about what, um, not just the positives, but also the negatives. Yeah. yeah. So this yeah. is a try. It's because the other pond I swim in talks a lot about this. So <laughs> uh, it would be yeah. useful, I think. Yeah. Isabel wants to find a famous YouTuber. Be our influencer, more agile responses. Okay, so if there are any other particular ideas here, then I think we have one more, this very quick reaction. We had these working groups just now. Um, I don't know whether you, you, some of you chose which group you wanted to be in. Some of you were assigned. Uh, thanks, Joseph. Country specific pages, that would be good. You have to kind of, kind of target them for specific countries. Interesting yeah. idea. That came up, Joseph is very clear about that as well. <laughs> that while Livestock Masters matter website is still global, we need to go into country. Okay. 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 Uh, since the food system summit, everything's become country. Well, huh? that's interesting. Okay. Um, I think we have one more chat message. I don't know, Michael, do you want to do the one about the, the group follow up discussion? Do you want to do that in a chat conversation? Or I hand over to Shirley to do the synthesis. Just, I mean, just to say this is, again, I mean, I think this is the starting point. I think there's two big things that GLAD3 will be doing in the next couple of months. One is really gearing up for COP27, and I think we'll have to do that quickly. I mean, uh, there are a couple of events, Africa Climate Week coming up, which we'll be at, uh, and a couple of other things. But I, I think we'll be, again, I, there were some great ideas here particularly around defining kind of a set of messages and ideas. And I know the Sustainable Livestock Coalition is doing something like that as well. So again, not trying to double up, but how can we complement one another? And I think Vivian had brought up the idea of really having strong narratives that everyone can use and use in their events. And I think it was uh, Maria who was talking about really just trying to make sure that we're spreading the opportunities around. So in COP27, people know what's happening. They know if there's spaces to speak, uh, things like that. So really seizing opportunities. And then the second thing is, you know, really looking into the countries and defining some kind of core countries that we'll be working in and bringing people in through there. Uh, and then of course, working in some of the other spaces of, of uh, health and nutrition. We have just so people know Namakulo is on the Eat Lancet Commission. So it's a great opportunity to use uh, her voice, you know, and and bring in things through there. So I, there's a couple of things going on, but I think we all, you know, as everyone has said, the climate cop will be big and leading up to that and other events. So I think that's where we'll focus efforts and at the national level as we go forward. Uh, Peter, you were muted. Yeah, sorry, Michael. So are, are those the next? Is that is that the next steps in the sense that's what's going to happen next? I think so. I think that's what we're focusing on. And I mean, next steps, of course, we'll put together a report and we'll send that out to everybody. People will have the minutes here. But I think, again, kind of building upon what we have here, focus on the the event of of uh, of the COP, what we heard, you know, focus on a common vision and some common narratives, and then people can go away and do their own thing and use their that through their own agendas. I think it was really important. Great. Okay, I think we have about two more minutes, so um, I think we go now to Shirley, right? Shirley was going to give us a few closing remarks, and then everybody is free. Thank you, Namakolo, for being on the panel. Thanks, Peter, and thanks very much, everyone, for your 
active engagement, participation, not only in today's discussion, but in the in the GLAD COP that you've all been part of online and part of our discussion today, hopefully, will inform and shape that as we go into the future, not just the GLAD project, as it were. Um, I've been part of this journey since about November 20, I think it was 2016, or was it before, when we had a very small convening uh, in Ethiopia and really started to say, what is it we want to do? Uh, and as Michael showed in one of his slides, it's been a journey and we've learned and grown and changed. And now we're having another step in that journey. At times, it's been quite a messy journey and a bit of an experiment as well. And so a lot of learning by doing, learning and growing together. And I think that all makes for a really good outcome. But I think we've also heard during today's discussions and in other places as well, some things that we have to do more of and do better. We need to do a lot better in sort of connecting the diversity of actors, both within the livestock sector and especially beyond the livestock sector. How do we connect with people who are not livestock specialists, but for whom livestock could play an important role in delivering on their wider development agendas? Really something we need to be intentional about. We need to do more at country level in all its manifestations, whether that's engaging with the whole range of different ministers and politicians, or it's getting others to be a voice in those discussions, providing the equipment and evidence at country level that allows them to do that. Um, I think the important thing to say is that it's, it's a diverse space. There's never gonna be a single answer uh, in terms of how we do influencing or who we should work with. So we've got to do a bit of tailoring, but it seems that from today's discussions, we've also had some quite good overarching lessons, ways forward, focusing on, on some of these things we've mentioned, in, including very much a systems and holistic approach. And we have some fora already, as well as the GLAD itself, we've got GAZL, we've got the subcommittee on livestock, we've got the coalitions. Uh, so opportunities are there and there's, a challenge as to how we engage with them. So thank you all for joining. Thanks very much to Michael, Peter, Cynthia, uh, who put this together. And we really look forward to taking it forward and watch this space. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, I think with that, uh, we'd like to, you know, thank, thank everybody and close it. We're 10 minutes over. So thanks for staying on. And with that, uh, again, we'll, we'll send some follow-up message after this meeting for next steps as well. Thank you very much.